just waiting for everything to cook up a little bit. Need to make sure that there's some people in the Twitch chat before we start. They should start pouring in. I say pouring in as if there's gonna be 10,000 people here, bro. Usually we have a small crowd. I like the small crowd. All in all, I wish you all a pleasant Sunday or, or whenever you listen to this. God knows when that might be. Maybe one day people are going to look back at this episode and say, wow, what he said is something that you cancel people for nowadays. So we're going to cancel your motto uh, for this episode 10 that he did because he was so angry about the O2 weekend. So he was just saying nonsense. <laughs> That's a scary thought. You know? I think it's very easy to get uh, pushed in your actions in regards to what um, the social norms are, which of course, you know, if you look back even 20 years ago, there's like so much has shifted and changed socially and culturally that a lot of things that were considered okay Sure, it wasn't correct that it was considered okay, but it changed, right? I remember reading this thing about Kevin Hart hosting the Oscars, and uh, it turned out he made some homophobic jokes a very long time ago. And uh, that, you know, you know, stirred up some shit. Of course. It is what it is. Just imagine I am doing something currently that is socially accepted now, but won't be later. What if talking bad about pro players is going to be like, wow, I'm going to cancel people for that. Talking bad about teams, going to cancel people for that. Now, of course, it's a difference. Right? Of course, there's a difference. O2 week. And you know, I'm not the man for, to making, to, for, for making excuse. I just think, you know, the fans um, deserve um, some kind of um, you know, background information on what's going on. And that's all right. And for the losses, you can blame me. But that's okay. Because I blame myself. And in that blame, I will find lessons of... Um, what to do better coming into the next week and when we are in situations like this. So first and foremost, right, so the majority of the players got uh, a vaccine, right? Some of us uh, got uh, Pfizer, some of us got Moderna. I don't want to turn this conversation into some anti-vax conversation, whatever. Right? So we had the, 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 the vaccine and it affected players very differently. Like um, some players got uh, more sick. You know, I can only I feel like it's only fair how it is to describe how what I went through. Well, I was just exhausted. I don't know. Like in the seventy-two hours after my vaccine, I was just I, was, I think I was sleeping sixty percent of those hours, just sleeping, and. Um, it wasn't easy. And we had players uh, being sick, you know, being uh, sick a couple of days, which just meant that our practice wasn't as good as it needed to be. And at the same time, you know, we, we, I knew this was coming. I knew this was coming and I knew the risk of it. And, you know, on, on my end, I could have prepared a lot better for this. And um, that's something that I do regret, you know, because teams can can prepare themselves for things that might be considered unforeseen and how you deal with that is very important. You know, things happen. When I say things happen is, you know, I might walk down the street and there's a chance that I might get hit by a car, right? Uh, Elena, can you please write me on Discord? 
I'm busy. I just uh, I talk to the door and then because Elena knocked and then Muffin <laughs> just meowed. Nevertheless, yeah. So we had one and a half scrim days, which is you know not the same as the usual four. Sure, it makes a difference, but still, you know, we could have done a lot better. You know, we 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 played very very poorly this weekend and. You know, missing two practice days shouldn't uh, drag us down to this level. Right? Like losing against SK, you know, no offense to them at all, with what we want to achieve and what we have shown, I think it's a bit of a tragedy, you know? They had an interesting composition, right? A good one. Allowed them to be a death ball. And uh, our um, composition need a little bit more finesse, which I think the boys are capable of, uh, to to win that game. You know, you know, in my end, we definitely were in a winning position in that game, and we threw it away by overextending. Right, that's okay, because at the end of the day. I feel very confident in knowing what we need to improve on. And I think I'd rather have the game that happened against Rogue happen now than later. I'm, Rogue had good preparation against us. And uh, they, the game was pretty much over after the bot fight where we killed Kalista and then they killed the, the three of us. This is the fight when they, I think, poured on Viego. And... Um, we will go one tapped. That was a hard game for us to play. Like Rogue definitely showed up big, and I think Rogue is a really strong team. And we uh, got annihilated by Rogue, and that's good because it showcased to us, you know, very clearly like things that we can't get away with. You know, it gives us uh, a good argument for what to work on, and you know. I'm 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 happy about that. You know, this is a very good timing for it. You know, week seven, rather that than in a best of five. So that's that's good. Obviously, we want to compete for the top slots, and it's important that we get wins. But this was in no shape or form us just like uh, you know limit testing because we reached playoffs. That's not how I would describe it. The SK game was, was a travesty, for sure. The Rogue one, yeah. We got a little bit uh, exposed there. But that's all good. That's all good. You know, the lessons are clear. We're going to adapt. The boys are strong. The boys are great players. You know, what makes a great player is not, you know, winning every game. It's about, you know, knowing how to get better. I'm... Just knowing how to get better, depending on the situation you're in, recognizing your flaws, improving on those flaws. Because in a lot of cases, you know, teams go... Uh, teams go through very similar hoops and ladders uh, in their progression. And uh, the more experience you have going through these hoops and ladders, the easier it gets. And uh, I have a lot of uh, experience here with these boys. You know, if we think, if we pull together our collective experience, it's quite, you know, quite interesting. So it's a good one. Let me just check if uh, Alana wrote me anything on Discord. Yeah, well, so some of the things that Rogue did were quite, quite clever. I don't want a backseat coach. 
and then Ibaxi coaches. It's okay, guys. It's all under control. It's a good O2 week. That makes sense. Did him? The vaccine is over. We're gonna have our second dose after playoffs. That's a blessing, you know. We've scheduled that out well. So we're not gonna have any dips. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. But we don't have any more dips in, in, in our uh, practice uh, week and performance. But all in all, a very, very well taken losses. Because on my end, it's all about improvement, it's all about adjusting the process. And these are the best of ones. Whether it was 2 0 or 2, the problems that we need to solve, that's my main focus. Let's take a look at some of the questions you guys have asked in like on Twitter. Yahya asks, Hey Amaro, much love and respect. Can you talk about how you stopped smoking? So what I realized about myself when it comes to smoking is that a lot of our behaviors are tied to environment. Right? So basically there was a lot of triggers in my mind that made me think of smoking and I made it very very accessible to myself which made it quite dangerous so basically in the office I stood by the window smoked and uh, in my home I smoked by the window I played league at the same time and I had a cigarette on and I was just full degenerate mode right so a lot of cues in my day-to-day -day life was just like press play, cue pop, smoke a cigarette before the game starts, boom. So it's like every game that was played, cigarette, boom. Just a lot of triggers in my day-to-day -day that, uh, you know, made me want to smoke. It's a very habitual thing. It's like, okay, we, we eat, we smoke, right? We go outside, we smoke. There's just so many things that were tied into the habit, right? So I decided I wanted to quit smoking the moment I changed environment. That made it easier. When you switch apartments, when you switch work, when you switch, you know, when you go, for example, whenever I went home, like my parents never knew. My, my, like my parents never knew that I smoked, right? But whenever I went home to Sweden, the change of environment made it easy for me to not smoke. Very easy. Different apartment, different smells, different, you know, routine. And that to me is key. Right? Changing your environment makes it easier to change behaviors. And that went, uh, you know, a very, very long way. Just don't start, yes, but... He specifically asked, stopped. Tahoe illustration with a rainbow flag. Do you think people fans tend to forget the human aspect of a professional game, like players being humans, having bad days, and how do you deal with that? Yeah, it happens. You know, it happens. You know, it's, it's, it's the most important thing is to build up resilience over time and make sure that there is no, like, ideal conditions that the players uh, rely on. That is, um, you know, the important thing. It's just that there are things that are going to happen that are out of your control and how do you deal with them, you know? 
it's, it's important to build up that resilience. And players can have bad days. Teams can have bad days. And that can make or break careers. Right? Alessandro Borsato writes, How do you keep motivated your team through the weeks, wins and losses? What should an athlete sport in esports think after a bad race match in order to be better the next time? It just the pursuit never stops, right? Sometimes there's certain elements that uh, are, uh, you know, difference makers that you can always adjust. The pursuit never ends. As a true competitor, you know, in the past I had a dream of being in the LEC, right? Playing in the LCS. You achieve that, your dreams get bigger. It doesn't stop. It just doesn't, doesn't, doesn't stop for true competitors. There's never, like, my fire has never gotten smaller. It has just grown more and more over the years. And what it comes down to is, you know, I went to the World Championship. The only thing I wanted to do after was get to quarters, get to semis, win the World Championship. Right? When I, when I win the World Championship, the only thing I want to do is to win the second World Championship. After I win the second, then the third, then the fourth. It's never going to end. There's no satisfaction. But when it does end, you realize that the satisfaction came from the memories that you build together with your players. You know? And I began to appreciate that too. Then just pause and win. Yes. That's true. You saw Doinby, right? Doinby won world. He's like, I'm gonna win a second one. Like two days after he won. This obsession never stops. Just never stops. How would you rank LEC based on just scrim? I don't feel correct uh, sharing that information. But it doesn't seem to be anything else interesting here uh, to answer. So unless you guys have any uh, questions in the chat, we can move on to the next segment. It's funny because, yeah, you know, it's weird because you, you want to view the community as one, right? But it's not ever as one. It's ridiculous to think that the community is as one. Because the community is just a lot of individuals. And there is a hive mind in place. But it's funny how quickly it goes from, wow. This team is so good to, wow, this team is just in team. And everything else is forgotten. It's funny. There's a high that comes with, you know, exceeding your previous heights. Thank you very much, Dizorus. Dizorus. 
one year with my favorite coach. Appreciate it, my friend. What headset are you using? This is a Sony WHX2, something like that. Like, I think if you search just those terms, you'll, you'll find it. How you feel about the upcoming schedule? I feel good, you know? I don't think there's any team that stands out as like, oh, this team is spooky, you know? I think everyone's floating around a similar level. I think Rogue is the most uh, consistent and uh, they know very well how to, to push leads and how to gain leads. I don't know what you're smoking, Breaker Girl, to, to make such a such an assessment. This is some armchair psychology. <laughs> but it's all right. I will not uh, ever stop developing as a coach or a drafter or as a person, so don't worry, you know. Lana has promised that she'll shoot me if I ever get to that point. Do you think LSE got stronger a week compared to last bit? No, I think spring is all, all really, really sloppy. I think summer definitely has gotten a lot better. I think Fnatic is better, D2 is better. I think Rogue is better. Mad Lions, RGD is a little bit worse, but still very similar. Business has gotten better. So yeah, summer is a lot better. You, you get a lot more time to mesh together, right? Spring split as well. There's no sun. You know, we just, there's no sun. So people don't have energy, man. The sun is broken. Sounds interesting, Falcon One. I wanted to um, read, you know, I wanted to bring back the lore readings. Hey guys, Elisang is one of the best Morganas in the world, if not the best, so. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not going to go too deep into why we lost and so forth. It's just what I can say is we are going to work really, really hard. Don't keep it. They were quite popular on your YouTube channel. Uh, they weren't that popular, but, you know, it was okay. So basically, I wanted to continue. You know, obviously, this is very difficult, guys. You know, I uh, am in a position where, obviously, I don't want to share anything that gives any, like, gives up any competitive advantage. That would be silly of me, right? It would be... Very ridiculous, so I'm not going to do that, obviously. And, um, you know, all I can say is I'm going to learn from it, I'm going to improve, and it's going to be good. You know, I look at my players, I see great opportunity, you know. I see these boys, you know, I know that they have um, so much potential. You know, these, these, are, these are my boys, you know. And 0-2 uh, is not going to change that. 2-0 is not going to change that either, you know. The way I view it is, every week goes by, you have to work harder. You win, you have to work harder. You lose, you have to work harder. And this was a tough week for us. We could have dealt with it better. And that's it. 
Yeah, I think the poor performance is definitely related to the fact we, we scrimmed so little, you know. It matters. Is there an office address we can send treats to the players? What a, uh, you know, I make my players unhealthy with your, with your candies. Well, the last time we read where Cathia once stood, that was the, the last piece of lore. And I thought we should continue with Zillion. It just makes uh, sense. Um, Zillion lived in Cathia, as far as I know. And um, that was. We just continue. Just uh, read. Uh, Zidian's uh, biography and, uh, and uh, yeah there's not much, not much more to add Zillion the chrono keeper Ikathia most desolate and cursed of lands was not always so theirs was a rich and diverse civilization ruled by benevolent Aksamuk last of the mage kings of old as the Shuriman Empire expanded across the continent, Aksamuk calls for peaceful coexistence were ignored, and his armies destroyed by the god warriors of the ascended host. Though humbled by this defeat, many Cathians saw an opportunity for mutual advancement, accepting an offer of autonomous satrapy. They installed a governing council of distinguished mages, philosophers, and lawmakers to oversee the transition of power. After almost nine centuries of imperial rule, a young man named Zillian joined the council's ranks. He was an elemental mage with a prodigious understanding of physical reality, who had studied under the greatest minds of the age, from the great Yun of Ixtal to the astronomers of Faraj, and countless others besides. There was one com component of the material realm that, had, that few had ever truly grasped, but Zidian was determined to master. Time. Time was the one inescapable constant in all things. Even the mighty god warriors were not immune to its passage, though... They were revered above all others in Shuriman culture. As part of the political establishment, Zidian now saw more clearly the smoldering discontent among the citizens of Ikathia. While their land was home to some of the most heroic leaders and revolutionary thinkers in the empire, not one had ever been deemed worthy of ascension. ascension. Again and again, the council submitted petitions to the distant emperor, yet access to the sun disk was denied without explanation. For all they gave, it seemed the Cathians would never be seen as equals. Zidian's own resentment grew, yet he was worried by open talk of secession among his peers. He was a patriot through and through, but in the face of the ascended host, any rebellion could end in calamity for his people. Seeking a diplomatic solution, he went as an envoy to neighboring Kalik, Kalduga, and Ixtal. He had many allies in his lifetime. He had made many allies in his lifetime, and he implored them to stand with the Kathia. Each time the answer was the same. They would not defy Shurima. If Zillion's people wanted to, they would do so alone. Returning home, he was shocked to find the council had decided to crown the new mage king, breathlessly. Joyously, they told Zillion of the ancient and forbidden power they had discovered, a power so great it would all but guarantee Ikathia's victory. They told Zillion of the power of the void. He looked to these reasoned wise Ikathians, but saw only madness in their eyes. As much as it grieved him, 
Zillion would rather his homeland revolution be crushed than to let this abomination be set loose. Zillion's worst fears proved true. Once unleashed in battle, the void overwhelmed the mages attempting to control it, and Akathia was doomed. As he tried to escape the capital, the ground shook, buildings toppled, such horrors as, as had no place in this world or the next erupted from the depths, driving terrified citizens before them. They were trapped. Hundreds of thousands of innocents would die. In desperation, Zillion urged as many as he could to take refu refugee refuge in his tower and did the impossible. He removed the entire structure from time. Crashing to the cold floor, his, his power spent, Zillion looked at the frozen figures all around him. The void was halted, but only within those walls. Outside, where Kathia once stood, there was nothing. Zillion had spent decades trying to comprehend the mysteries of time and causality, and it seemed only he could move fro freely back and forth within the anomaly he had somehow created. These people had been saved true enough, he just didn't know how to undo what he had done to achieve it. Through deep meditations and esoteric devices of his own design, he began to divine the strands of past and present that led to this moment. He began to divine the strands of past and present that led to this moment, gradually learning how to move back and forth along them, looking for a future where his efforts had already succeeded. It was there that he found the true threat, the end of everything, the great unmaking that awaits Rune Terra. Effectively, Zillion now exists everywhere and always has. Even so, he is only too aware of the consequences of trying to bring about change in the world and sparking other unexpected destinies. Often conflicting and almost always more dangerous. Perhaps if he can find a way to save his own people, then the greater disaster might also be averted. The only question is, what might he be willing to sacrifice along the way? Okay. This brings it together. This brings it together, you know? There was a war, I believe, between... Ikathia and the Ascended which is like the Nasus people and the Azir people, right? And the, the Renektons, right? They are the Ascended. The whole... The cycle of life and death continues. We will live. They will die. So those guys fought, and I believe... Aksamuk, I, I, I believe Aksamuk is, it might be Jax, it might actually be Jax, and then the void attacks, and that's where Velkos comes in, Velkos comes in, so I guess we continue with Velkos the next time. All right. I'm looking forward to this next week, honestly. Looking forward to it super much. Probably going to go out, grab something to eat, then get back to work, prepare for the week, study the VODs, super weeks. So boys are interesting. I wouldn't want to be in NA's shoes ever. You know, maybe at some point, but the system just looks terrible. I believe Niski is playing football, yes. Oh, 
Illusion. Sunday Tiredness. Is the next voice of Yamada going to be on Monday? Probably, yeah. We can do a piece of lore every time, um, every every episode, and then eventually we will cover everything. By the time the the league MMO is out, I think <laughs> we'll be um, we'll be good. Can you play the guitar? I would. Be very careful with that language. You know, the race for playoffs is going to be interesting. Astralis and Excel in, in a good spot. I know that they face each other. Uh, but the tricky thing for Excel is their schedule. Like Excel needs to play against Rogue, G2. Rogue, G2, and Astralis. While Astralis have... A very, very easy schedule. They have Excel, SK, Vitality. Okay. And maybe SK is the best team in the world. Like, we, we lost against them. And let's see Vitality. What's the, what's the Vitality schedule? Vitality has Rogue, Schalke, Astralis. Entirely possible, but Astralis' chances look the best. Astralis' chances definitely look the best. SK, Misfits, Astralis, Rogue. Uh, maybe they could pop off too, man. Yeah, Rogue, Rogue, uh, during regular split, they, they kill people, man. This is going to be a very, very tight race for uh, for the world spots. Which makes it so much more exciting, man. How good is going to feel? The tougher the challenge, the better the rewards. Do you think the Astralis have overperformed with the roster? I think White Knight is very underrated. I think Zanzar is decent. I think Promise Q is decent. Like um I know people like to clown on, on, on Promise Q, but I don't think he's as bad as people try to make him out to be. He can do some clever things, he has his moments. I thought we can just end the day with some meditation and then I can go off. So usually this meditation that I wanted to introduce is more of, um, you know, often we've done meditation that is focused on mindfulness. And uh, in, in essence, most meditations are uh, with the focus on mindfulness and this is not also going to be you know uh, centered about centered around mindfulness in one shape or form
usually what what is done though is that people lie down during this type of meditation they just lie down palms facing upwards you lie down, lie down on your back that's trying to figure out how to make it uh, function for people that are sitting in chairs because that's I'm, I'm assuming most of the people that are watching are sitting in chairs if they want to in fact join in right Are you still a coach for fanatic? <laughs> yes. I think I deserve to get fired already. <laughs> yeah, you're a tough man to please. <laughs> Okay. What do you. We're going to begin our uh, relaxing meditation. You can be in your chair. You can lie down on your back. Ideally, you would lie down on your back with your palms uh, facing upwards. Try to make your head, neck, and spine just uh, in one line. I'm going to be doing this sitting down. Eyes uh, gently closed, just gently. Make sure you are completely comfortable. You don't want to be uh, moving uh, too much uh, during this meditation. Just uh, keep your eyes gently closed. If you have anything that is restricting, like glasses or Maybe watches or wristbands or you can also take it off. Just make sure that you are completely comfortable. Take three deep breaths. On the inhalation, feeling calmness spread throughout the body. And when you exhale, feeling any tension leaving the body. Take your awareness to the sounds in the environment. Scan the room for any sounds, the building, the outside. Don't linger on any sound, just notice and move on. Let's continue. Searching for sounds. Now, focus in 
on a specific point in your body, try to only relax that point. Imagine that this feeling of relaxation is something that you can move yourself. Imagine that it begins only in your right thumb, your right pointy finger, your right root finger, your right ring finger, your right pinky, the palm of your right hand, your wrist, and so forth. Just continue to move this feeling of relaxation up to your bicep, to your shoulder, to your neck, and then to your left shoulder, your left bicep, downwards. To your left fingers, your left wrist, left tricep, your left sides onto your hips left hip your left thigh the left knee the left calf your left foot the left toes and continue continue along to the right leg your right sides too Now just try to find a feeling of relaxation in your back. Your legs. And now try to find the feeling of relaxation in your face, your forehead, your temples, your nose, cheekbones, your cheeks, 
chin. Your jaw. Relax. Now, maintain your natural breathing rhythm. Count from 27 backwards. On breath, 27. Next breath, 26. Twenty-five, and so on. If you ever find yourself being distracted, just start over. Find yourself reaching zero, just start over. If you ever find yourself being distracted, that's okay. Just start over. Now I want you to bring your focus to the sensations of the contact your body has with the floor, the chair, with the clothes that you're wearing. Just focus in on those sensations. Scan the environment. Try to remember where you are in your mind. Hear the sounds and be aware of where you are. Now, whenever you feel ready. Just wake up and stretch. Oh. 
and you can open your eyes. So the purpose of a meditation like this is to, you know, help it serve as a, um, you know, power nap. It's supposed to make you feel very you know, relaxed, and it functions as a power nap, and it gives you a little bit of a energy boost uh, throughout the day. Thank you very much, uh, Killeran, for your prime. Gives you a much needed energy boost. Uh, we will crop this and, of course, uh, put it in a separate video. I uh, just thought that we would try something different than the usual mindfulness exercise that is also very useful. Um, I never actually used Headspace, but I've heard good things about it. You know, there's a lot of crossover uh, between uh, a lot of uh, meditation services and um, uh, usually is because uh, very similar things are at the core of it. Very similar things are at the core of it. You you can you can scour through uh, thousands of uh, different meditation, you know, guiding scripts, and they are going to have a lot of similarities. You know, counting the breath, and uh, you know, focusing on points in the body, scanning the environment for sounds. You know, making, you know, on inhalation, feeling calmness spread throughout your body and on, ex uh, on, on your exhale, that the tension leaves your body. These are very common themes in um, many forms of meditation. And I think it uh, stretches very, very far back. It's something that, uh, you know, like the, 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 the thing that we just did now, I believe uh, the name of it is uh, Yoga Nidra. I might be completely wrong, and my pronunciation might be terrible too, but I believe the translation is physical sleep. I, you, you just, you, you, you're supposed to be completely aware, but you feel as if your body is asleep, you know? Yeah, we'll do blues. Uh, I think that's the end of this episode. I have a lot of work to do, you know. Uh, this weekend was terrible. And uh, I will need to learn from it. I need to watch the games, apply everything, and uh, reflect on the weekend. And make sure that uh, we're going to do a fantastic uh, for the next one. The reason I like doing the other one more is because I get to also go through the motion. Here I need a little bit more concentration and I need to have like a better feel for the timing so I can't participate, participate in the same way. But, um, you know, the essence of meditation in a lot of cases, you know, is, is, the, is the mindfulness uh, idea of it, right? Mindfulness is, is so important because it's, it's so much more than just performing. It's, it's about being able to live by the values that matter for you in the day-to-day. -day. About not getting caught up in things that are out of your control, uh, things that you get upset about or angry about, and maybe you don't want to be. Because very often people that are angry and sad or, or emotional don't want to be, right? It's just that... Uh, there's a skill that you need to train to, you know, explore yourself, who you are as a person, and understanding yourself. And for me, mindfulness brings me enjoyment in the moment. I think that's important too. You, you, you get to train the ability to make the choices that... Uh, you want to make, right? Mindfulness is that moment in time where you get to choose between, let's say, a cucumber or a cake. In that moment, your instincts can pull you towards the, the sweet, savory delight that is uh, a cheesecake, but uh, in that moment, you can practice mindfulness and remember what you want to, what you value, right? Just making choices, active choices and not letting our instincts uh, uh, drive us. 
very curious to read more about what why we are genetically predisposed to have for, for having emotions right there needs to be some evolutionary uh, purpose for it fear right fear is supposed to like these emotions helped us survive right? I'm curious what the role had in the past. But anyway, thank you so much for, for coming, guys. You know, the zero two. I won't apologize for it. Because we're going to learn for it. And uh, it's going to matter, you know, in the long run. I'm happy about, uh, you know, what Rogue, Rogue exposed us. And then the SK game was just terrible. And hopefully next week we're going to have a um, full week of practice and that's going to be very useful for us so ladies and gentlemen and everybody else thank you uh, so much for coming along on this journey i'll catch you guys on the next one peace and bye bye